What are we trying to achieve with our burn? Well, I'm using this as an example right here. If we look, half of this amount is 16 ounces. That's the minimum amount of moisture that we need to cook a meal to give us good gut satisfaction. Now, what's good gut satisfaction? Well, good gut satisfaction would be approximately the content of this bowl, which is approximately 16 to 20 ounces. Now, how do, what is that based on? Well, that's based on what I call a, a truth. What's a truth? A truth is if I have three dissimilar cultures who have developed technique, a utilization of a tool, utilization of a, some sort of a technology, independently, not influenced from each other, to what works for them. That's what I call the truth. Well, if you look through the world, this would be a, basically is based on a Chinese bowl. It's approximately the same size of what would have been used in Europe. Because in Europe, you take like the French peasant. The French peasant, he normally had one bowl and he had one spoon. That's all he had. The capacity of that was approximately 20 ounces. And that's what a person needs, 16 to 20 ounces to have good gut satisfaction when they eat. If you go back to the Roman legionnaire, his basic ration per meal was 16 ounces of food. That hasn't changed today. It is still found the US military did extensive study on how to come up with the lightest, most efficient ration for their special operation troops. But what they found, that if people didn't have one good meal a day, that which comprised of about 16 to 20 ounces of volume, their psychological well-being broke down so much that it hurt their effectiveness. So when you look at the pro Pack Mountain House meal in the vacuum pack meal, that was based on development by the U.S. military. So they found that if that person has that once a day, they can sustain themselves on 1,500 calories up to 10 days at full efficiency. If a person just eats, like say, energy bar, which gives them still the 15 to 2,000 calories a day, psychologically he'll break down. And that's a truth that the Roman legionnaires found, it's a truth that the French peasant found, and it was a truth that Chinese uh, coolie found, is that's what they needed to sustain themselves over a period of time. The minimum pot you should have, and which was interesting as we go along, the minimum pot you see today for the smallest capacity, what we can look at is the U.S. military. What is the U.S. military? This is actually a British one, but say be the canteen cup. Canteen cup is approximately 750 cc's or approximately 22 ounce capacity. There's probably been more meals ate out of a canteen cup than any other individual camping pot in existence today. That would be the minimum I would say to use. If you look at a really popular pot that I'm sure all of you are real familiar with, it's approximately 800 cc's or approximately 24 ounces, tight fitting lead, nice wide base, uh, folds very compact, very durable and very compact. There again, you've got about the same volume as you'd find here in the canteen cup, or you'd find here with the Chinese bowl. Another extremely popular size is the Snow Peak 900. There again, a little bit bigger, closer to uh, 30 ounces. We're staying within that around quarters of a liter to uh, 22 to 24 ounce capacity. It really is ideal for the minimum for one person. Now, can a person get by with less? Of course, here's a real popular. This would be the 700 mug by Snow Peak. Uh, excellent pot. This one's been modified where I have a bale handle. What's the advantage of the bale handle? Bale handle allows a person to set it next to a campfire, pick it away from with a stick. It also allows one to suspend it over the pot. It also allows the person when using a biomass stove to whereas they can pick it up, feed your stove. Pick it up, feed your stove. So it has a great. The minimum you would want to go to is about 700 cc's. Can you go down to 600? Sure you can. Some people even use a 450, but then you're doing multiple chargings. I really think I wouldn't go anything less. You know, if you want to go real minimalist, maybe go down to Snow Peak 600. It's sticking in around 700 to a liter, the liter being the optimum, and that would be for summer use. When you start going, looking to go to for winter, late fall, then I would say you want to go to something that's at least about two liters or close to it. The reason being you're going to have to melt snow. When you're melting snow it probably takes a run of two to three times for you to get one liter of water. And I'm always in real favor, like I really like the Morris pot. 
perfect size. It's about two thirds as wide as it tall. I like that for a bale handle. The wider the pot, the better, but the less stable it is when using a bale handle. I can fill this with liquid when using the bale handle and I have a low center of gravity. If I take a pot like this and I fill it, I have a much larger chance of it tipping on me. One of the largest causes of uh, injuries when camping is scalding. So we must make sure we provide for our own safety. So I find if you look at a pot that's two thirds as wide as it is tall, I find that's a perfect size, a great compromise. And then have my stove at least a third narrower or at best a half, you know. So if you go whatever the diameter of the fire pot, you can go double that and that's the largest diameter you want to use with that style of stove. When people talk about a billy pot and the use of a billy pot or the billy up like they say in Australia, what that originates from is that people didn't really have the wide use of metal cookware until they started widespread use of canned goods which was in the 1850s. One of the biggest items that was canned was beef and they called that billy beef. And then they would take the empty cans and then they'd use those for doing their cooking in. And so that's how the term a billy pot came from, was from actually using discarded cans as a cooking vessel. You see a lot of people really like these where they'll take, a, this happens to be a Heineken can, another one they use the Foster cans. It's actually a very poor uh, cooking vessel because it's narrow and so tall. Uh, you're losing a lot of your heat to the atmosphere. You're not allowing for good transfer of energy. I know they're real popular, they work. Mm, it's not something I'd use because it, to me it's too fragile, too prone to for damage. And I find that I'm hard on things. I find the bush is hard on things. So I want something that will last.